Okay. Can you hear me okay from, from this room? Oh yeah, the, I can hear you just fine. You okay? Yeah, you're good. All right, let's do it. All right, we are live. Good afternoon, good evening. Hello, friends. Welcome to another webcast in our Together at Home series from Buffet Crampon USA. My name is Matt Vance. I'm the Woodwind Product Specialist, uh, joining you live from Jacksonville, Florida. It is my pleasure to be here once again. I hope all of you are healthy and well. Uh, I would like to welcome our very special guest this afternoon, uh, Buffet Crampon clarinet artist and assistant professor of clarinet at the University of Oregon. Joining us live this afternoon is Juan Kat Kim. Juan, how are you? Doing uh, very well. Thank you, Matt. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing well. We are, we are healthy and we are safe here. And uh, we, are, we are thrilled that you are joining us this afternoon. Um, in the, uh, in the, the prep before we went live, uh, Juan, we were talking a little bit about some of the different topics we touch on this afternoon. The one thing that we always like to start out with with our guests is to find out uh, what our artists have been doing uh, since the pandemic really kicked in in March. Um, and I know that in Oregon, you've been dealing with, with a lot more than the pandemic with the fires and everything else. So maybe uh, give uh, our viewers uh, a little bit of an idea of, of what you've been up to and, and how you've been uh, using the situation to your creative advantage. Yeah, of course, it's been really strange summer, a strange spring, and going to be strange fall and winter, for sure. Um, I mean, you know, a lot of heart, we all know about how bad things were in every possible way. And from the onset, I try to really focus on, you know, what, what can we do to, to make the best out of the, the situation. For me, uh, foremost, it's been just being able to be with the family. I mean, we've been very fortunate to, to have, you know, a home and, and the family that we can stick together. So we've been stuck pretty much with our four-year-old all through the summer. I mean, since March, when her, her uh, school, preschool, just decided to send everybody back. And we've been together throughout September and we don't have any family nearby or, or anything. So we were literally three of us in the house for, for that many months. And so, you know, it, it was very difficult to get things done in a typical manner, but we also got to spend uh, really precious time together. And I think that that sort of translated into some really positive energy. Um, and also for me, um, you know, all my teaching went online. So th this past uh, semester, right before the summer, um, of course, students had to like shift all their perspective into that. But I, I was really kind of surprised how resilient everybody was and we were able to make through. So again, we, we kind of focused on things that we could do very well. Um, we obviously focused on developing the, the fundamental aspects. Lots of practice time for sure for everyone. Everybody played the solo unaccompanied repertoire at the end of last term. Um, some really challenging repertoire that I would typically not assign. So that was also nice. Hmm. Now, after uh, the summer, um, like I said, we stayed home for the first time in I don't know, many, many years, always, it's a busy time for us to travel. And uh, we were able to actually kind of, uh, once we got into the routine, we were able to play together, me and my wife. Um, so that's another fortunate thing for me. I have a pianist in-house that I can just, you know, play with. So we kind of revisited a lot of old repertoire. And recently we've been actually uh, putting together more of a smaller chamber ensembles. And, um, you know, it's still pretty, um, risky to to do anything inside you know for for us wind players so um as the weather became really nice um well once the, the smoke that kind of took us over for a few weeks um this past month mm. but other than that we were able to really take advantage of the the outdoor weather so we've given several concerts already and um you know trying to do a lot more of them in coming coming weeks yeah very 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 cool. And that was that was one of the things I did want to touch on with you, um, which we'll get to in a second about you've been very active with outdoor performances. Um, our, our viewers will probably notice that we actually have three screens open uh, for this afternoon's webcast. You can see Juan in his home studio and I'm, of course, in the webcast studio. Uh, in a few minutes, Juan is actually going to go to the other camera and be uh, joined by his wife, Grace, who is a world-class pianist. And we're going to uh, hear the pro each student clarinet in action, which I'm very excited about. And we did a little test run uh, before we went live and it sounded fantastic. So I think that's gonna be very cool. 
Um, so Juan, currently you're not, you're not teaching in person at all. Everything for you is online. So as we were planning the term, our university worked really hard to, uh, to accommodate uh, different students, different faculty, um, um, their teaching uh, style. So we had an option of doing some in-person lessons. I chose to do my regular weekly lessons um, online just to be consistent with everyone. But again, I just, uh, I prepare for the worst and now the, the weather is so nice and there seems to be a lot of kind of spaces around the music uh, school music building. I've been actually doing some uh, in-person teaching, um, again, all outside, with still a lot of distance. And that's been proving to be uh, nice, especially just having the personal contact because that was the, the biggest challenge um, uh, among many others, of course. But just, you know, you can easily lose the contact after a few months. So it's just really good to see students um, every week, despite heavily guarded face, you know, sometimes hard to tell who's who, you know, but um, so I, I don't think that we'll be able to do that for so long once the weather starts getting bad and, and rain raining. But um, I, I, got, I got pretty comfortable teaching online um, after, again, the whole uh, uh, semester and also the whole summer, I've been teaching so many lessons online, different online academies and, and festivals. So. Yeah, that, that's that's the situation, and um, you know, hopefully, we'll be able to go back um, soon, <laughs> sooner than later. Yeah. yeah, well, and and I know that you have been very active with uh, online teaching. Um, of course, music education has has changed quite a bit in the last six months, and it's been a challenge for everyone involved to to make the best of the situation and come up with creative solutions. Um, what what are some of the things that you have discovered with online teaching that have been surprising for you and maybe have been a nice surprise or, or uh, uh, maybe an unexpected advantage of, of teaching online? Well, um, again, I think all of us know um, how challenging it is to do it this way. Um, so that, that's sort of the given fact. So it's just a matter of dis discovering how to use the time and just given situation technology the best uh, to the to best to use. I mean, even among students, some actually have a very good connection from wherever they're connecting from. Great devices. Uh, so the the really hardest it's hardest situation is when students are connecting from their phone in a dorm room. I mean, what what can you possibly do? Mm. So. Um, it, I um, actually, we, we changed things a little bit here. So we're giving students access to get into our buildings and connect from sort of like the virtual studio. So like we have a two way um, great setup. So that, that will help us overcome at least that techno, uh, technical problems. Um, as far as the pedagogy itself, um, yeah, the, not being able to sort of catch on the, the subtlety of the physical reaction, just like, you know, the, our expressions, having the, you know, presence together, of course, we can't play at the same time. You know, sometimes I, I'd like to just accompany students when they're doing the repertoire, sing at the same time. There's always that, that delay that happens. And then of course, there are very small things that are difficult to pick out through the microphone. Um, now, all of those, uh, many of those are maybe not so, uh, very uh, possible to completely overcome, but um, I, I think I've got much better at least picking all the details I'd like to get. From, from these um, weekly interactions. So the more I, I spend the time, even from just the visual cues and what I hear from the sound, I can pick out um, what, what we'd like to discuss. So the lessons are not superficial anymore. I, I thought I felt a little bit like that in the beginning, but now I really feel like I'm getting most of the things I want to get done. Um, it does have some advantages, strangely. Um, so sometimes I'm using some techno, uh, technological tools. There's a, a tuner that I like to use on site, not to discuss the intonation, but there's a tuner that actually analyzes our the harmonic series and overtones and things like that. And it's kind of fascinating to see that real time. And these are things you can uh, do too in classrooms or in real lessons, but I probably would not have used readily had this not been the case. And, um, you know, it's been nice to connect with guest artists and other speakers. It's kind of nice to share the screen in, in many ways that proved to be really convenient. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's um, just uh, cutting to the chase, it's the, the uh, how you can maintain the content and, and just focus on the things that work and then sort of expand from there.
Um, yeah. I hope we're not stuck in this forever because you know that <laughs> that would really change things tremendously. So there's always that hope of you know going back to normal at some point. Um, but I think um, at least for the time being, this this is working much better than I was initially worried. Yeah, yeah. I when we're we're talking about. Um, unexpected benefits, this webcast series has actually been one of those unexpected benefits that we're able to visit with our artists all over the country and all over North America and, and get their insights on what, what they're doing in the pandemic. And that, that's some very good information and very encouraging information, I think, for music educators that are, are struggling a little bit. I'm, I'm married to a, a middle and high school band director, and she's had to be very creative and very resourceful to keep the students engaged. And I think you made a very good point that initially when you switched over to online teaching, it felt superficial, I think was the word that you used. And you're kind of going through the motions and, okay, well, this is what we have to do right now and we'll get over the hump. Now that we are six, seven months into this, everyone is, is come to the realization that they have to make this work and they have to be productive. And I think you've, you've come up with some very productive ways to do that. You so. mentioned the, the engagement. I mean, that, that's really critical for the young students. I already, I, it's been only a few years since I, uh, well, not a few years, maybe a decade since I was school, but you know, it's very easy to forget what it feels like and just not having that kind of interaction. It, that's really, I think, one of the hardest thing for students, not the like, repertoire or scale, but the, really that, that kind of connection. So some of the things I've been doing was creating the virtual space for students to interact. I actually use uh, Facebook a lot because it's very easy to upload and you know look at each other's videos. So I created this uh, vir virtual practice room, what I call. So every week I assign the, the technical stuff like the scales and arpeggios and everyone has to upload their portion and people can sort of comment on it. And the idea is that you know as you go into the practice room, you, it's as much as you practice one thing you like to do is kind of peek in and see how others are doing i'm a little better than that or oh yeah it's, you know but you know i i thought that was really kind of fun and so the students really kept up so we branched out into doing more uh you know extensive stuff like etudes and and repertoire so um by the end we actually last year we had a virtual recital um and you know we we didn't do it through zoom because there's a lot of disruption with the sound but i had everybody record their solos and then we put it all together and we did a Facebook watch party so that um, we have a good quality video that's streaming and everybody, we could see everybody watching it together and like, you know, give an applause at the end. So that, that was kind of cool. It was a little bit more work than, than um, you know, what, what would have been done in this way. But so I, I think it's just, we can find those ways to, to interact. And right now I have students who are uh, connecting from um, Los Angeles and um, from Taiwan I mean, these students just didn't make it for the, for this academic year, and they're our students currently. So last night, I gave a student, uh, my DMA students, um, connecting from Taiwan. So it's it's kind of nice. And sometimes he connects uh, in our studio time, which in his time is 3 a.m. So I mean, that, that's yeah. <laughs> certainly a dedication. I, I don't know if I would be able to do that myself. Yeah, uh, he is very dedicated, obviously. Yeah. Well, and I, I think that's another great point is that um, uh, I think we've come to realize that that a, a large component of being a musician is that musical community. And with the pandemic and with the, the isolation, um, everybody has been cut off, at least physically. And I think that's, that's really wonderful that you have created almost a, a virtual uh, studio class and I, I love the comparison that you had about, you know, if you're if you're practicing in a practice room and you go to the other practice rooms to see what the, the other students are doing, that you've created that environment online that they're still able to do that. I think that's very, very cool. So now you said you've also been teaching your in-person students outside while the weather continues to, to be nice in Oregon and everything. So and you've also been doing some outside performances as well, correct? Yeah, and I, you know, this is sort of um, the idea we've been toying um, from uh, back in the spring when everything kind of fell apart. Because uh, first of all, all our engagements were were postponed or canceled. And as you know, performing artists, I mean, not being able to perform really takes toll. Um, no matter how hard you try, I mean, there's just something that that's irreplaceable. And I'm used to performing a lot in in different places. 
um, and and also we realize that people are really missing those those performances. So at first we you know recorded a lot of clips. We've seen a lot of crazy stuff being done. I mean, one person playing the full orchestra, for example, and, and putting it online. Um, it's a really time consuming and. Um, we wanted to have the real performances and uh, real uh, interactions. So, you know, having small crowd, um, very informal type of concerts um, outside. Now, those are very challenging <laughs> in, in many reasons. Um, we don't have a hall, you know, things are very kind of uh, contingent upon weather and uh, a lot of distractions, noises, and also playing the piano outside. I mean, that's that's how do you overcome that? So Grace, my wife, very bravely picked up uh, on on the keyboard and started taking that outside. So I mean, you know, it's one thing to play some some light stuff, but like playing heavy romantic chamber music or others, that's uh, pretty much flat out crazy in ways. But <laughs> it's like bra braving those elements. I think that enables us to still play, and it, I for that reason, I think it's worth it. So it's you know the, we do have to compromise a lot musically and things happen all the time you know when blowing music off and we learn and we make a better music next time you know the, the guy uh, mowing the lawn next door all of a sudden in the middle and we kind of figure out the routine and things like that but again it, it's a lot of trouble i gotta say i've been carrying that heavy keyboard everywhere we go and it's always my my job to carry that to the site and then just like where's the outlet and it's just so much um, to the performer. You're never kind of in a comfortable state. But um, I think in one way that, that gives us enough challenge to, you know, be strong players. Um, but I think that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is like we get to play music and we, we forget how important it is. Like we th think about the online, the mask and the safety in person, off you know online teaching and all of that and we forget why we're doing this to begin with it's like we do this so we can play um and i i think that's that's one thing i try to do uh now um both for myself and my students and i just try to give my own example to my students and i'm kind of very happy to say that many of our students want to do this now like you know i told them who's ready to play a recital in two weeks before it starts raining or before it gets cold and typically that's that's not a very good idea i mean it's like for us week three going into week three but under this circumstance i think that trouble is actually worth it yeah and it is a good motivator as well uh if you're just joining us this afternoon we are being joined by our special guest from the university of oregon he is assistant professor of clarinet there uh Wan Kat kim is uh, kind enough to uh be joining us on our together at home webcast this afternoon. Uh, we have some Buffet Crampon uh, colleagues and friends that are tuning in this afternoon that would like to say hello. Lori Orr from the New York Showroom is joining us and she says to give her regards to you. Also, uh, Kurt Wittstadt is our Mid-Atlantic Division Manager. He's joining us as well as Chris Coppinger, who is our Northeast Division Manager. He's out on Long Island this afternoon. And Yao, who is the Principal Clarinet of the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra, is joining us as well. Yao, it is great to see you and we appreciate you tuning in and we hope you are well. So uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in. Uh, in a few minutes, we're going to change vantage points. We're going to uh, follow Juan as he goes downstairs to perform on his Prodige student clarinet, which we're going to get more into in just a minute. Um, dovetailing the, the outside performances and the outside teaching, I know uh, just recently, I think it was last week, you did some concerts in your garage, correct? Well, that one actually was a rehearsal. Oh, that was a rehearsal. We, okay. Yeah, we opened the door um, and the garage uh, rehearsal really started with my wife, who recently became uh, artistic director of our, our local uh, chamber music society here in Eugene called Chamber Music Amici. And like every other uh, ensembles and chamber music venues, I'm trying to figure out a way to plan their season. And it was her idea to to do these uh, outdoor series. Um, and I was kind of actually inspired by that that initiative. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot of rehearsals going on in our garage for some time and other others garages as well. And it's nice to like see people walking outside and they just stop and, and, uh, you know, applaud and some people just stay there for like half an hour, you know, uh, between their walks and every now and then they come and talk to you about their you know, experience. I used to play that, you know, a long time ago. So it's, uh, it's gratifying. 
um, yeah, so um, I haven't done an actual concert in my garage, but I think once the weather becomes more uh, debilitating, I think we may try to do a garage concerts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's a very cool idea. And I, I think it shows also that that people, the casual passersby, they're they're desperate for for some culture and for some interaction. And it's it's uh, it's encouraging that you're able to do that and encouraging that people are stopping and listening and enjoying what you you and Grace are doing. Absolutely. Um, a couple other people in the garage. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> the long overdue project. Yes. Right, exactly. Uh, a couple other people joining us this afternoon. Uh, Diane Barger from the University of Nebraska, Bufer Campron artist, is uh, uh, tuning in and says to tell you hello. Also, our director of sales and marketing for Bufer Campron USA, Al Maniscalco, is tuning in and uh, says it is great to see you this afternoon, Juan. So lots of people joining us today. Thank you so much. I would love to see you all. Um, it's it's that's that's a real sad thing not being able to see. Everyone, I uh, missed all the uh, friends and buffet uh, this past summer when, when the summer academy was um, canceled. That's right. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit more about about that as well. Um, so, with with the, the taking advantage of outside performances and outside teaching, uh, a couple of weeks ago, well, a couple of months ago, uh, you contacted me about the Pradesh clarinet, which is the student clarinet from Buffet Crampon. And um, I, was, I was recalling that when I was in Oregon last year, and that was right at the beginning of the hashtag we play Prodige social media campaign. And you were one of the first artists that made a Prodige clarinet video for us. And um, I, I wonder maybe if you could talk a little bit about your initial impressions of, of a plastic student clarinet that you had never played before. And, um, and then maybe talk a little bit more about the Prodige now that you've had a chance to, to really get your hands on one and spend some time with it. Yeah, um, so I, you know, um, I think I first tried it at the Chamber of Music Northwest uh, big clarinet celebration when you guys all came to set up. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, typically when you do these things in convention, you're under a lot of kind of hurry and you, you really kind of have to play your best <laughs> anyway, so it takes a little time. And uh, even with, with that kind of mentality, it was actually surprisingly easy to play and responsive. And it may be a very personal thing for me, but I played Tosca and, and just even the key work was fairly um, uh, adaptable to me. So there was like, I'm not mistaking the, the keys too much. And then after I play a little bit more, I, I realized the, the actual quality of it. Um, and and um, a lot of things I desire for my own clarinet is sort of built in here. And those are things like you don't want to fight the instrument, um, whether it is the key uh, mechanism or just the, the response. I realize now I play this a little bit more like today and yesterday, earlier today. Um, it's actually slightly more uh, uh, resistant than, than my own clarinet. I think it's actually good because my own clarinet is very free, and I, um, but it, it does give the students sort of the, the um, uh, ca capacity to focus their sound and build up that, um, the strength, but it's, it's not overly uh, restraining. So I think that's what I really like. It, it have the um, young students starting with, I can see that they can develop very good habits, uh, mm. whether it's embouchure or the air flow. And then um, I just, you know, really love the, the keys here. And that's, that's one thing. I mean, I, I can put on a good mouthpiece and play some of the beginner models. And what I would do is like, oh, I just hate the actions of it. You know, it doesn't feel very good. You know, sometimes the key doesn't go all the way in the, the alignments, but this, this thing just is, is done really well. So I think that's, that's what I um, like about this. And um, the, the reason I wanted to try this was um, it gives me a good, perspective of you know what the students would be dealing with and for me as an educator um, at college level but essentially it's so important for us to have a good beginners because eventually there is the one they're going to be the one who, who will come through the program and and you know hopefully uh, study music and may end up with me and the, the better they are set up in the beginning I mean that that's you know how easy our job would be um, and I think if everybody would start on something like this um, I think that 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 that's just gonna make that 
chain of good things to happen. Make it easier on everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you wanna do you wanna play a little bit for us? Well, that's a good question. After all this talk, I mean, you can already <laughs> see how foolish to to be playing. Um, you know, let me just see if uh, the clarinet's very good, but the reed, as you can see, that it's never good, right? Yeah. <laughs> Is it very humid in Oregon right now? It's uh, actually quite dry. Well, oh, really? Uh, well, let's see. I, I think we're transitioning into the rain, uh, rainy season. So this is my I guess, fourth year now. So I'm getting used to the weather pattern. It, it changes a little bit every year. I think, yeah, I'm getting a little bit. We're getting a lot of fog. And um, there was some water outside. So it might, must, might have rained. But in, in the past, you know, two, three months, I can just count to my fingers how many times it rained. Um, and that was, again, the big problem with the fire, um, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, so I'll, I'll meet you downstairs and um, we'll just noodle around a little bit. And um, uh, I'd like to play this uh, piece uh, called Gantelin by Louis Gauzac. And, I, you know, that piece, it's, it's just one of really my favorite pieces, very lovely. But also, it really requires the delicacy of the, the the instrument. It's not something that you can just like battle through, right? It's so. Well, let's see how it works. <laughs> I'll, okay. I'll, I'll see you soon downstairs. So we'll in, we'll like, see you downstairs. Yeah. So while Juan is is doing a change of venue, just to to let you know some of the features of the Pro D student clarinet, um, it is an ABS body, it's or plastic with nickel plated keys and leather pads. Um, one of the really notable things about the Prodige clarinet is the fact that this is a polycylindrical bore instrument. This is a, a bore that is shared with the E13 entry level professional clarinet and also with the E12F semi-professional clarinet. So this is a professional bore on this instrument and it's an all new tone hole layout from the previous student clarinets that Buffet Crampon had. And it's a wonderful instrument, especially for the value and the price. Um, you can also see the absence of a bell ring that provides uh, uh, improved resonance and response for young players. It also has a texture in the bell, which you probably can't see on our webcam, but that also helps this plastic student clarinet get that buffet ring to the sound that everyone always talks about when they're talking about buffet crampon clarinets. So it's a wonderful student instrument. I think it's, it's a real testament to the quality of this instrument when you have high level players such as Wong Kat Kim that are able to take a plastic student clarinet and play advanced and world-class literature on this instrument as we'll see in just a minute. Uh, if you are just joining us, welcome to another, another hashtag, hashtag Together, together at Home. At home. Hey, there we go. Um, another uh, Together at Home webcast. We're being joined by Wong Kat Kim, who is the assistant professor of clarinet at the University of Oregon. And there is his wife, Grace. Hello, Grace. Hi, hi, man. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Grace is a wonderful pianist. She has uh, served as one of the staff pianist and accompanist at the Buffet Grandpon Summer Clarinet Academy. And uh, we are thrilled that Juan Cac has browbeaten you into joining us this afternoon for a little performance. So thank you so much for joining us as well, Grace. My pleasure. Okay, so you, uh, the audio is on, right? Oh yeah, we can hear you very well. Here's our council in. <clears throat>
Bravo. Sounded fantastic. Well done. Well, thank you. That was Beautiful a... performance. So I'm going to go up and um, let Grace use the, the space down here. OK. <laughs> thank you, Grace. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> It's just 20 steps up and I get to do this every day. Um, a few times, that's my whole exercise routine. See, that's how you stay so slim and trim, Juan. <laughs> and I'll show you my uh, new setup uh, that I changed recently in my studio. So I have a large uh, screen that's attached and uh, some, some great um, camera and, and microphone. So it, it's been working quite well. Yeah, very cool. So let me, I'm going to leave this meeting and then join you again on my computer. Okay, sounds good. While Juan is, uh, is switching to his other device, um, a little more information about the Prodi student clarinet. The model number is BC2541-5-0. And it is available from Buffet Crampon USA dealers in the United States and Canada. It is a wonderful student clarinet. As you can see, we have a new case for the Prodige uh, that we just transitioned over to this year, which is very durable and provides lots of storage. And for dealers will hold up very well in rental pools over many, many years. So it looks like you're back and you are, you are comfortable now. That's good. So, you know, I want, I want to get a little bit into, into your background. Um, I think it would surprise a lot of people to learn that you actually had uh, a different career in mind when you when you started uh, as a, an undergraduate student at the University of North Carolina. Right. Um, I actually started clarinet fairly late. Um, I think my first private lesson was when I was 15, when I came to the US from Korea. Um, I got introduced to the instruments uh, maybe sixth or seventh grade for a couple of times, but really I didn't really play in ensembles. And I was kind of blown away with the, the band here, um, just the whole instrument group playing together. So I was assigned the last chair of our concert band, the, the second band in one of the uh, my high school, Fair, Fairfax County, Northern Virginia. And then just like the sound really kind of, um, you know, blew me away. So from then, I, I was introduced to a really great teacher, my first teacher, uh, Ken Lee in Indiana, Virginia. And he uh, studied with Roshanov uh, back in the days and really kind of prepared me a, a good, solid background, despite of the late start time. So by the time I went to college, I really, music was something I loved to do, but I had absolutely no intention or even like I thought it was not possible to, to make a career out of it. it mm. That option was just not in my mind. So I majored in math because that's something that I uh, was good at and you know something that can be used for a lot of other um, field. And towards the end of college things have changed quite a bit after tasting just you know the, the, the great joy of playing music and um, I really wanted to do it somehow but I still didn't know how. And it's amazing. I think now thinking back, I didn't even know um, orchestral career was a thing until I finished college. So it was very kind of un, uh, uninformed. At that time, I was preparing LSAT for law school. And, you know, that was sort of like where I was steering my career into uh, with, you know, my parents uh, giving some some thoughts on that, too. Um, I'd say the gentle pushing, uh, staring away from musical career, too. But, you know, I kind of maneuvered my way around in, in uh, grad school, uh, which I did both master's and uh, doctorate degree at Florida State University. And um, there I, um, I really, <laughs> right. oh, that's nice, yeah. Um, and uh, for me, I think I really had those three teachers, Ken Lee from my private, uh, you know, high school days, um, Don Ayler from UNC Chapel Hill, and Frank Kowalski, those are my mentors. And it was their career that I was kind of uh, the only careers almost that I knew. And, but it was so fascinating and, and uh, likable that I thought if I do music, that's, that's going to be how I do it. And that also connects well, resonates well with what I, I guess, originally was intending to do was to teach at college level because 
I come from a family of academics. My, my dad is a professor in French. My grandfather was a botanist and uh, professor um, in, in Korea. So that's sort of like what I'm really used to. So in the end, I think it's sort of the career that I planned without knowing. Um, I am in, in the ac academia, but I also get to um, do something I really like to do rather than having to write um, you know, a lot of academic papers. I get to play a lot of great music and, and work with people. So it's been really um, grateful and satisfying career so far. And just having that, uh, the freedom of doing all kinds of different performances and also be able to interact with uh, students. And um, in, in fact, that I think that taught me more than anything um, in recent days. We don't have teachers anymore, but we're like teaching every day, just the, the wide variety of uh, students, background level that, that really made me think in many different ways. And now in just recent times, I'm, I'm making more connections with uh, what I studied in, in, in mathematics. And my wife's been telling me about this too. It's just, it's not those like immediate connections, music theory with the number theory and things like that. Those are, those are actual math when people say music and math are related. But the things I'm talking are more kind of a practical matter. How you, do you approach the tonal concept or how you approach the legato or others? I'm, I'm somehow drawing this uh, uh, concepts or mathematics. And it, it's actually helped me to articulate my thoughts to, to my students and just, you know, be able to express those things. So that, that's been kind of nice. I haven't done it formally, but I maybe I'll try to formalize some uh, some of that um, for for my own and, and perhaps share later. But it's been kind of interesting development in the past few years. Yeah, very very cool. If you're just joining us this afternoon, our special guest on uh, Together at Home webcast this afternoon is Wan Kak Kim. He's the assistant professor of clarinet at the University of Oregon. He is also a buffet crampon clarinet artist. Uh, we've been talking a little bit about the Prodige student clarinet that Juan Kak is uh, currently playing for outdoor activities. And uh, we just had a performance a few minutes ago, which was fantastic. Uh, I was Juan... say, it's, um, it's very likable. I mean, that, that's, that's a huge thing, right? I think some, some of this beginner clarinet, like I said, it's not very friendly. So uh, I just uh, really commend you for, for uh, releasing such wonderful instruments for and for students, but also for, for, for us, I think um, it, it's playable, very playable. Um, it's not Tosca for sure, but it's, I, I feel pretty um, uh, good about uh, make, you know, making more frequent performances with this. Sure. So I think that, well, that will improve you know, some. The one thing I noticed during your performance is, um, of course, everyone talks about how the Prodige is able to, to capture that ring to the sound that Buffet Crampon clarinets are renowned for. Um, I also noticed a, a fluidity and an evenness to the instrument that, of course, a lot of that has to do with you as a player and what a wonderful player you are, but it also has to do with the fact that the instrument, because it comes from a long tradition of, of world-class clarinets, being able to incorporate those design elements and that history into a plastic instrument, I, I think is, well, your performance proved that, that it is capable and able to do those things. Yeah, there's a very specific sound uh, scape, I think that belongs to the buffet crampon, the family of buffet crampon. And it's, it's almost like the invisible legacy that, that you connect directly with these guys. I mean, like, you know, Causa and, and Close and, it's it's just really special to, to be able to do that. I saw you that I, I got an email this morning that you released a, a legend uh, boxwood clarinet. That looks beautiful. It's yeah. it's a very beautiful instrument, and uh, we we hope to have it uh, have one at our New York showroom for people to uh, play test soon. The New York showroom currently is not reopened yet because of the pandemic restrictions, but. Uh, Hopefully soon we'll be able to do that. And it's, it, it is a very beautiful instrument and a very different instrument as well. Mm -hmm. um, I gotta tell you, I got um, this urban play mouthpiece that uh, came with the, uh, the Prodige. And um, I, I forgot to shift around. And I, when I first played this with uh, Grace, I played a bunch of uh, repertoire. And you know, it was a little bit resistance, more resistant than, than usual, but I, I was playing fine. And then later I was like, oh my God, I was playing on this mouthpiece with, with the reed that's really hard. <laughs> it works. And I, I'm glad that this is included. Um, 
Yeah, well, and I'm glad you brought that up. The, the urban play mouthpiece is included with the Prodi student clarinet. The idea being that the instrument comes with a high quality mouthpiece that a young player can play right out of the case and is going to give them good response and good sound. And, and that's tremendously important because um, I, I'm a Van Dorn artist. So I play a Van Dorn M13 lyre. Uh, and what I sort of, the reason I settled it is it's very kind of, um, uh, let's say, not, not an extreme mouthpiece, I think. And that, that, that enables me to do a lot of things. So it may, you know, people have different choices depending on different situations they play, different halls they play. But it's a very, uh, very flexible uh, mouthpiece. And I feel actually very similar with, with this. I have to use slightly softer reed, but it is, it is, um, it's not crazy in other ways. And I think that a lot of the beginners, unfortunately, end up in some, some wild mouthpiece. And that, that's a detrimental to their early development. Yeah. So I, I'm glad that uh, this is being included. That's a very good point. Um, if you're not familiar with the Urban Play mouthpieces, in addition to being included in the Prodi student clarinet outfit, they're also available uh, from many Buffet Grumpon authorized dealers around the United States and Canada as an aftermarket mouthpiece. And the fun thing about the Urban Play mouthpieces when they were introduced a few years ago is that Unlike the mouthpiece that came with your Prodige clarinet one, you can get them in different colors. <laughs> and um, what I would like to do is, since you teach at the University of Oregon, there is a very beautiful green urban play mouthpiece that I think would look fantastic on your Prodige clarinet while you're playing outside uh, at the university. I think people would really appreciate that. <laughs> that, would, that would be fun. Yeah, and then, you know, outside playing is not unheard of. I mean, like we have all these military bands and marching bands, right? So, the, but a, a lot of times we compromise so much because you know on those things, it's there is a misconception of if you do these things, you can't play seriously. You know, it's not taken seriously. And I think that's one thing I'd like to fix. So, I, I, it is casual, and then you know we're 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 trying to include as many people to this as possible. But musically speaking, uh, our intention foremost is not to sacrifice you know what we would bring in the highest you know uh, venue that we would you know get to play every now and then it's just and and i think that delivers to the audience too no matter how what their backgrounds are i can feel the different sort of connection and I, even for my students too and uh when you're not giving all of uh what, what you have you can you can feel the the disconnect and it, it would be a lot doing a lot of things for you know going a lot of the trouble for maybe not not so much worthwhile reason right if you do that so yeah and, uh, um but it's fun definitely i'd like the green mouthpiece um and i think um it's I, like i said i can play on that mouthpiece i'll, I'll say that yeah. Yeah, very good <laughs> yeah. well, well we'll see what we can do for you as far as a green mouthpiece i think the, green the, green and yellow yes green and yellow yes and actually the urban play logo on the mouthpiece is in kind of a yellow gold so it'll that's perfect ducks color for for you up there. So um, let's let's talk a little bit more about about your path to um, where you are now. And I, I think it's it's really interesting to talk about because you had a, a unique ascent in the clarinet world, but also educationally. Um, of course, you're Korean, but you your path to the United States actually um, took you through Europe, did it not? Well, so that was a, just a brief uh, uh, period that I lived in Paris. And I, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, my uh, dad is a professor in French literature. Mm -hmm. uh, he's Korean, not French, but, uh, um, you know, so I, uh, I got to live there for a couple of years when, when I was in elementary school. So uh, my dad was a visiting scholar. And um, at that time, though, I didn't know anything about music, really. Um, besides that, my mom always played a lot of classical music, so that's been sort of ingrained. So had I known this this opportunity, I would have co connected and and you know take took advantage of this this great French uh, music, you know, just the legacy and history. But um, I'm thinking in retrospect, maybe it, it's a reason that I, I'm able to do what I am doing now because I was I took the path that I took. So a lot of times as a student in kind of a early stage of my career. One thing I regretted more than anything was just missing out that early training um, on the instruments, just technically speaking, and then just you know all the exposures you would typically get as 
as a conservatory student, pre-conservatory student, and I almost became envious of seeing my own students in case when I do master classes at you know Juilliard pre-college, I was like, oh, amazing stuff they get. It's like I never got to do that, but um, in a way, I I, I think that's a re reason I think quite differently, and it's been incredibly fortunate for me that those differences were accepted and and um, maybe put into to to good use. And um, but you know it's always perpetual state of sort of catching up for me because I never got to do any of those. Um, now that I have I can breathe a little bit and I can really kind of look into the more of a longer term goals. I'm a bit more relaxed in that regards I think because you know I've got all this time to to do those things that maybe I, I wasn't able to do. But also a lot of things that typically would would not uh, belong to um, conventional clarinet playing. Uh, one of the, uh, you know, chamber music has been sort of my greatest fashion and I, I'm sure a lot of us clarinet players just having just incredible uh, repertoire and that's it's got to be one, one of our favorite endeavors, but um, also sort of branching out to the new music and um, that sort of gave a lot of um, opportunities um, to, to kind of pioneer on, on certain uh, composers, certain areas, certain type of music. Um, I have a chamber group that consists of the, the Messian Quartet uh, combination that we started at actually at Florida State. Um, we're going into our 12th season now and we're doing a CD in December, um, our third or I think our fourth, third or fourth CD, something like that. Mm. Um, one of the all new repertoire, well, some arrangements and uh, repertoire. Anyways, um, so th that's a Messian Quartet combination, and I've played that piece over a hundred times now, and that that's not something that many people get to do. So it's kind of a very kind of unique way of uh, building up. Uh, one interesting that I started doing since a couple of years ago was to collaborate with uh, Korean traditional musicians. So I always had this idea of playing with, um, you know, working with Korean composers because you know there's that inherent connection, and you know. Um, whenever I visit Korea, it's one way to, to establish nice um, new, new friends and new, new opportunities. But um, the traditional music has a really long uh, background in history. I mean, going back several thousand years and um, the, the chasm has been always there. I mean, it, it, it was never sort of fully integrated. And now a lot of people are venturing out way to sort of include and work in an interdisciplinary manner. So um, I, you know, tried for the first time a series of collaboration, um, I think two, three years ago, and it was really much more interesting than I was hoping for. So sometimes you have this great idea you put together. It's great because the idea is great, but you know, the actuality, it's maybe not something you want to repeat. And that was not the case at all. So I'm hoping to do more of those. Um, and there are many different ways of doing it. You can play with this traditional instrumentalists. And, you know, this is by, uh, it, it's not a new uh, effort by any means. People have been doing this all over. Uh, I mean, Yo-Yo Ma and the Silk Road Ensemble or others. And another reason is uh, when I saw these fantastic uh, virtuosos doing klezmer improvisation or the Bulgarian improvisation, the Greek playing, I was like, and it's so natural to them and I would try to imitate, but you know, it would just never get to the level of um, intuitive uh, of playing. So again, I was jealous. I was like, I wish I could do that. And then, you know, I looked into some of these, this music of my own country. I was like, you know, there is a, a, a way to do it. Um, it it's, I think it, it just t takes a lot of different perspective and I am hoping to study more uh, of the music. But even when I try to imitate and play, um, things that are not written in the score. I mean, it's just a whole note, you know, going into another note, but I can kind of feel what needs to be done. And I think that has been delivered in, in few performances I've given. So again, one of my long-term project is to, to delve into this a little bit more. Um, and I, I, I'm kind of excited about that. Very good. Do you, um, I mean, obviously the pandemic is placing restrictions on on everything, but do you have plans to travel to Korea to, to do some performing or recording? Well, I had uh, several things scheduled uh, this past summer, but uh, we just decided to take that precaution. Now, I'm thinking retrospect that actually might have been a good trip because the summer in Korea was in a pretty good situation, um, you know, and now they're back to very high level um, alert, which is like 
hundred new cases per day for fifty million people,、mm. and that's like really serious over there. Unlike <laughs> you know here,、um, I think we have that many in the county right now. Yeah, right. Yeah,、cases. exactly. Yeah, but、um, I I hope、um, I hope so because、um, more than anything, I, we miss our family. Both、uh, myself and Grace have our family、uh, living in Korea, and both grandparents really miss our、uh, their granddaughter.、Mm. So、um, that that's one of the most important reason. But yeah, I have um, uh, some um, well, two things I miss is you know musically is. Uh, collaborating with the、um, my regular collaborators and also opportunity to meet all those new people, my clarinet community,、uh, as well as the, the the Korean music. But I got to over the years really attached to it students because I would teach a lot of lessons、um, in in、uh, high schools and colleges、uh, conservatories. Last summer,、uh, well, not this past the summer before, I taught at、uh, Korean National University of Arts. Uh, with uh, fellow buffet artist uh, Jerry Che,、uh, he's a professor there, and、uh, many others. And I just really kind of it was good sort of chain of、um, uh, you know time. Each summer I get to see them again, and and、uh, many of them are interested in coming study here.、Um, I actually recommended the buffet academy to to some of them.、Um, hopefully in the, in the future we could you know、um, do more exchange of that sort. And、uh, yeah, so I, I hope、um, maybe next summer、um, it, it, the traveling becomes more possibility. Yeah, that would be fantastic.、Uh, we have a few minutes left this afternoon with our special guest Wan Kak Kim. He is joining us from Eugene, Oregon, at the University of Oregon, where he is assistant professor of clarinet. If you have any questions for Wan this afternoon, or comments, or if you'd just like to say hello and tell us where you are. Uh, you can chime in on the comments section of today's live together at home webcast, and、we'll, we will be happy to pass、uh, those greetings or questions along to Juan.、Uh, also,、uh, Declan Lynch is our producer this afternoon, and he has put some information in the comment thread、uh, about some things that we've talked about. There's a link to the product page for the Prodige、uh, student clarinet that Juan so beautifully played for us earlier this afternoon. Also, some information on the boxwood lejon clarinet that、uh, we we talked about in secret a few minutes ago, and、uh, also some information about the urban play mouthpieces that、uh, are a wonderful option for young players.、Um, Juan, I think it, you brought up a very good point with your development as a clarinetist and how you felt like you were always maybe. A step behind, you felt like you started a little bit late, and I think that's probably for you as an educator. I think that works to your advantage in some ways because you have you have a perspective for your students to where you really know the the nuts and bolts of how to put in the hard work and how to develop and and the different things to work on. Could you could you maybe talk a little bit more about how that's helped you as a teacher? Yeah, of course. I mean, first is the relate, relate, relatability to with with the students,、um, especially with with the students who don't have extensive musical training、uh, background.、Um, there is a lot of I, I think the physical aspect that、um, you know that's difficult to achieve, but、uh, to me the more much more important、uh, thing is what's behind that, the, the ability to. Hear the music, the ability to to sing the music, just understand where you are when when you're playing,、um, and not just pushing the buttons and hoping for the best, you know, as fast as possible. So I, I and it's very easy to fall into that.、Um, sometimes you gotta try to churn out the students, meet the var variable um, um, the barriers to pass on to the next level, and and, and so on. So I'm not disregarding the importance of those. I mean, those are Assume the, those those are the very basics that everybody has to satisfy, but、um, I think it's it's more important than ever actually to to pay attention to why we're doing this and how we're gonna you know make your voice you know continue on. I mean beyond the grad school audition, beyond the orchestra audition,、uh, and I think it's this very narrow kind of mindedness is 
uh, is an issue that I discovered later into my, my training. And, um, and that, that's, um, that's done harm ultimately to those, even the, the most select players and, 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 and um, you know, the, the schools. Um, another uh, aspect is um, we, we cannot survive like that. I think we have to really sort of encompass um, all community, all, all members, all different students. And I think there's a way we can do that without compromising our artistic um, standard and our vision. So I, I think, you know, rather than sort of centering the clarinet as the foremost, and it's, uh, I guess, interchangeable with flute, whatever the piano, is that that is really a tool that, that we, we, you know, we found our voice through that, but then how we can sort of use that to, to, um, to take us into the, a contributing member of the, the, the community and the society. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people, when they, the, the pedagogy of, of learning, well, really anything in music is that sometimes it's easy to lose sight of, of why we're doing this. The fact that it really is all about the music and it's not just about pushing buttons, as you said, it's, it's that you're, you're really trying to say something and, and emote something and present something. I think you bring up very good points. Um, we're, we're getting close to the end of our webcast. I do want to say hello to a couple of uh, other people that are tuning in this afternoon. Mike Lomax, one of the good friends of Buffet Crampon is joining us this afternoon. Uh, Mike, it's great to see you and we appreciate you and Catherine tuning in this afternoon. Uh, also Thomas Piercy from New York City is uh, sending his regards and says hello. Uh, Eric Schultz, who is the assistant professor of clarinet at Coastal Carolina University, who was just at Buffet earlier this week and selected a beautiful RC Prestige A clarinet is joining us. So Eric, thank you for tuning in this afternoon. Also, uh, Boya Kurgulia is uh, joining us. She sends her regards to you as well, Juan. So lots of people tuning in and, and enjoying your conversation and your, your musicality, my friend. So I, I, um, I gotta say, I, I don't have my Facebook loaded up. I've been actually staying away from social media for some time just this past summer. Um, I, I don't recognize it anymore. So I, I guess I could have seen all of these if I were on Facebook. I, I just want to say uh, such gratitude for, for everybody who tuned in. It's so good to hear your names. And I, I really missed all of you t talking regularly on, on Facebook. So I kind of went back and I spoke with some people vir virtually. And it's just really good to know everybody's, um, you know, connecting and doing well. Um, just, uh, I know there are all these comments that are, um, that, that are uh, chastising me now too, right? That you're not reading. So I'll, I'll try to not read those, <laughs> all the bad comments. No, 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 no. No, all very positive and, and all very glad to see and hear you. Um, uh, one other hello from Albert Nemiroff, who, uh, is a friend that I have gotten to know over the years at the NAM show in uh, Southern California. He is uh, saying hello this afternoon. He's a, a big supporter of Buffet Grampon and he uh, congratulates you on a beautiful performance this afternoon. So one, if people want to learn more about you or the things that you're doing or, or the different performance and educational endeavors that you have, where can they go on the internet? Um, so I recently realized my, my domain has uh, expired and was bought by some candy company. So Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So I changed. Uh, I added my last name. So wonkakim.com. So that is uh, now under my control. I'll make sure that my credit card expiration doesn't affect it anymore. All right. <laughs> um, I also uh, revamped our uh, University of Oregon Clarinet Studio website fairly recently. And in the process, I um, added uh, a chronicle of a lot of these activities I mentioned, such as the virtual practice rooms, our virtual recital, and a lot of those kind of uh, recent performances that I've given. Um, I, I also learned to use more of the, uh, the video tools. So I'm kind of compiling those, those uh, scenes, hoping that these will, you know, at least provide some ideas to people who, who want to do those things. And, uh, for our students because you know they're all featured in there and they, um, it, I think it's a good way to kind of encourage them uh, to continue to pursue so I can um, send you those two uh, to you right now on the chat um, if that could be shared oh that would um, be great 
Yeah, so my website is. Yeah, I think I think Declan. Yeah, he already got your uh, your personal website posted in the comments section. Now that the 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 website I had in my old bio again may direct you to the candy company or. <laughs> so, he, so, yeah, he got the new one, the wonkatkin.com. Yes. Although we really do like candy too, so. <laughs> Well, that was uh, several several months ago, and you know what what happens to this domain? I'm really afraid. So hopefully, and then th this is our uh, our University of Oregon uh, clarinet studio, and I I intend to keep it um, freshened up and up to date as much as I can. So um, you can check us out, especially some for any students who are interested in um, studying uh, clarinet, um, anything else. It's it's just a great place to be. So I encourage you to to contact me or, or look into it. Um, if you study with me, I can even tutor you math. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the dual thread. That's very clever. So, um, Juan, we really appreciate you joining us this afternoon. And, and it was wonderful to see Grace as well and to hear the two of you play. Um, I do want to tell our viewers, if you did join us uh, late this afternoon or you missed any of this afternoon's webcast or if you would just like to to review it. Uh, this will be, of course, on the Buffet Grandpa New York showroom uh, Facebook page, but it will also be on our uh, YouTube channel, which is Buffet Grandpa Rhapsody Live. And that is where all of our webcasts are archived as well as our hashtag We Play Prodige videos, including a video by Wong Kat Kim. So uh, if you'd like to check out any of those, you can go to that uh, YouTube channel. Once again, it's Buffet Crumpon Rhapsody Live, and you can find all of the archived videos as well. I do want to quickly uh, remind you of our next webcast next week. Uh, we'll be going back to the brass world with our uh, brass brand BNS. High brass product specialist Warren Coos will be presenting modern jazz styles with his guest James Suggs, Paul McKinney, and wages are good. So uh, that will be next Thursday on the New York showroom page at 2 p.m. Eastern. We hope you will join us for that as well. Wong Kat Kim, thank you so much once again for joining us this afternoon. And uh, we hope you and your family remain healthy and well. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you in person very soon. It was a great honor for me. Thank you so much for inviting me. And, and I just want to again say thanks to anybody who stopped in. I, it's a terribly busy time. So um, I, I particularly uh, am thankful for, for saying hello. And um, I, I'm, uh, I need to buy a new clarinet. Um, so I'll, I'll, maybe I'll fly to Jacksonville. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. We will welcome you with, with open arms and a face mask. All right. Thank you so much, Matt. All right, Juan. Take care. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in this afternoon. Have a great day.